Imagine buying your first home in Vancouver and only needing to pay 60% of the market price for that home. The BC government covers the rest and you don't need to repay that amount for 25 years. This sounds like an absolute dream for anybody looking to buy a home in this area of Vancouver, but the bigger question in today's video is whether that is the best use of $670 million of taxpayer money. That's your money. On the surface, the attainable housing initiative initiative offers something absolutely revolutionary. Homes over 40% below market value for middle income families in a city where housing is almost impossible to afford. This is designed to help first time home buyers get into the market by putting down as little as 5% towards a property on only 60% of a home's market value. Now, if you're a little bit unfamiliar with what I'm talking about here, we're going to dive into the details and you're going to want to hang around to the end of this video as well, because I'm going to let you know how you can get your hands on something absolutely incredible worth up to $350 for absolutely free. So if you're interested in learning about that and all about today's topic, well, let's get into it. Hey, I'm Darren, team leader of a top performing real estate team serving Surrey, BC and the surrounding areas. You might have seen me featured in big media like on Global TV, CTV or in various newsprints like Business in Vancouver or the Georgia Strait. I created this YouTube channel to help you learn all about about the areas of White Rock and Surrey, BC, and to offer a trusted voice for everything going on with real estate in British Columbia. Our team has helped hundreds and hundreds of people just like you buy or sell a home. So if you find yourself looking for help, connect with us by checking out the video description below, where you'll also find tons of valuable information and downloads for both home buyers and sellers. Now, enjoy the video. Okay, so here's the details on exactly what we're talking about with the AHI. The Attainable Housing Initiative is designed to help around 2,600 middle income first time home buyers in Vancouver using a total of $670 million in provincial funds. It will provide homes at 40% below market value located in the Heatherlands, a property owned by the MST Nations. The homes will be sold as 99 year leaseholds. And through the program, buyers will only need to pay 60% of the home's market price up front using a mortgage from their financial institution. Now the remaining 40% of the home's value will be covered by the BC government. And this portion of the payment doesn't need to be repaid to the BC government for up to 25 years. It can either be repaid when the home is sold or after that 25 years is up. To qualify, buyers must meet certain income and asset limits. For example, to buy a studio or a one bedroom unit, a household income must be below 131,900 $50 and a net household assets must be less than $150,000. For larger homes, the income limit is $191,910 and asset limits are $250,000. Buyers must also have lived in BC for at least two years and the home must be their main residence. Under this program, if the buyer no longer uses this home as their primary residence, well, they will have to repay that 40% contribution back to the government. The program aims to make home ownership more affordable for first time buyers by reducing the upfront costs, but it also includes rules to ensure that these homes are used as primary residences and not rented out or resold for quick profit. Buyers who sell the home within the first year must return the government's contribution and are not entitled to any increase in the home's market value. After the first year, they may keep a portion of any market appreciation based on how long they've owned the home. The $670 million from the province will be gradually recovered as homes are sold or after the 25 year repayment period. So on the surface, this sounds like an absolutely awesome plan. It's gonna help 2,600 people become homeowners, which is noble, exciting, and so great for the people to get to take part in the program. Here's the catch though. This program only helps 2,600 people become eventual homeowners in a city with thousands and thousands of people struggling to find affordable housing. While 2,600 people are destined to be helped by this program, well, $670 million, that's a lot of money. So effectively, this program hands over $670 million to 2,600 people, locking up that $670 million of taxpayer money for decades and decades to come. The question I have for you in this video is whether it's really fair to allocate those funds, such a significant amount of taxpayers' funds, 
to so few people. Let's put this into perspective a little bit and do a little bit of math so you see my point maybe a little more clear. $670 million of taxpayer money divided by 2,600 homeowners equals roughly $257,692 per person. Now, while this is not free money that these people are getting, that is a huge investment into an individual family and money that is simply not spread across our community. So this initiative is absolutely fantastic, but it's really only fantastic for those who are able to participate. Is it fair that such a large portion of taxpayer funds go to help such a small group of people? And remember, we're not talking about vulnerable, low-income people in our communities who could really use that money. We're talking about well-paid, middle-income families who are choosing to live or want to live in the middle of Vancouver, an absolute world-class city. With the AHI, the government essentially loans 40% of a home's value value for up to 25 years, leaving the province without this money for decades. $670 million, in fact. Is that a sound financial decision when so many are in need of immediate support? And should we be lending money to a select few at the expense of long-term affordability for the rest of the entire province? By reallocating these funds and redirecting them to benefit much more of the residents of this province, rather than just 2,600 middle income earning people, we can effectively have a larger impact upon thousands and thousands of people right across this province. While the AHI helps some, 2,600 in this example, are we really solving Vancouver and the lower mainland and BC's housing crisis or are we just providing a short term solution for a few? I don't claim to have all the answers, but some examples of how you could maybe reallocate that $670 million, well, there's a lot of very good suggestions that are not only easily available to pull the lever on to start, but the information and the ideas, well, they're already out there. We could do things like eliminate the property transfer tax, a tax that every single home buyer, unless they're a qualifying first time home buyer or someone buying new construction, everybody in the province pays this. And it is a massive, massive, Amount, adding thousands and thousands of dollars to a home purchase. Eliminating this would make home purchases more affordable for everyone and not just a select few. It's estimated the province of British Columbia has collected around $1.9 billion of property transfer tax in 2023. Or not just limited to property transfer tax. What about ideas like first time home buyer grants to encourage them to get into the market? Or what about rent to own programs? Programs where that huge portion, that $670 million, is not immediately immediately tied up and not going over to other provincial resources while still helping people looking to purchase homes. And these are just examples to say that the money, that 670 million stays in the housing sector and doesn't go out to other areas of the province where we're experiencing challenges and really need the money. This is things like healthcare, fixing wait times in hospitals, something very prevalent that just came out in the news, or maybe helping with overcrowded schools, improving our infrastructure, or there's so many ideas on where that money could go, but it's good that it is directed to housing, so let's try and focus it towards housing for our ideas. In the end, I kind of see this more about fairness for the entire province and the people that really need the money and benefiting more people or a bigger selection of people, not just a select few living in Vancouver. And this is where my question for you comes in, where I'd love to hear your opinion on this in the comments below. The question is, shouldn't we be questioning whether there's better ways to allocate $670 million for the entire province to make it more equitable for every everybody looking to buy a home. Does this program truly solve or help with our housing crisis or is there a better way that we can allocate these funds? And while you're down there in the comments section, I'm also going to encourage you to subscribe to this channel so you stay up to date on everything to do with Surrey, BC, White Rock, BC, or anything just like what we're talking about in today's video going on with British Columbia real estate. You're also going to want to check out the link to our BC Home Buyers course. Over three hours of videos, PDF downloads, and questionnaires to help you buy your next home or your first home in BC like a pro and avoid all the pitfalls that sting so many would be home buyers. Buyers. Right now, we are giving away 20 free admissions to this course. We usually charge $350 for access, and you can get one of 20 of these admissions we're giving away right now for absolutely free. First come, first serve, so be sure to check out the link below and get yours before they're all gone. And if you love learning about everything going on in the crazy world of BC real estate, you're going to want to check out this video coming up next where we dive deep into something that I think every citizen of this province, whether you live here or someone that is coming to live here, should absolutely know. And I know you'll enjoy it. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.